And so I want to talk about the number one worst thing that ever happened to patient safety in the history of humankind. The HIPAA rule. This goddamn HIPAA rule is so ridiculous. Okay, and I know, I, I get it. It was done for a specific reason. It was done to protect people. But you know what's happened? It has totally f***ing ruined, ruined healthcare in the current day. And let me tell you why. So I have worked at a lot of hospitals, okay? I, I did some locums for a while. I worked at a lot of different hospitals. Most of them are between 100 beds to 350, 400 beds hospitals, okay? And I'm not gonna tell you where they were or whatever because everybody gets their panties in a wad when I say, you know, that I may have been at their hospital and then I'm saying like something bad about their hospital. I'm not saying anything bad about anybody's hospital, okay? I'm saying that HIPAA has screwed everybody because it f***ing handcuffs us. It handcuffs our ability to evolve as an industry, our ability to evolve faster, right? With technology, everything, everyone is evolving faster. Everything is getting better. Technology is getting better, right? Police officers are evolving. Their industry is evolving. Teachers, they're evolving. They're getting better. They're able to teach online. They're able to reach more students in a more efficient way. Healthcare has not f***ing moved. And it's because of HIPAA. Now, if you don't know what HIPAA is, basically what HIPAA does is it restricts the uh, access to patient information, which is, is great. It's a great idea. Your health information should be private, okay? I get that. But what it has done is collateral damage, unintended consequences, okay? Because of HIPAA, I'm a f***ing surgeon and I'm sitting in a car and teaching about surgery to students, college students, med students, residents, right? You guys are listening to this stuff because you wanna know about surgery. But I can't go in the fucking hospital because everybody goes bananas, right? And the reason, it's not the hospital and the administration's fault. It's because they are scared of getting nailed from HIPAA laws. They're petrified. Like, I took a picture in the OR that you could not identify a patient in that picture. You don't even know if there was a patient in that picture. Like, for all we know, there was a fucking block of wood underneath an OR drape, and we were pretending to operate on that. There was nothing even remotely close that looked like a human being. But the administration went crazy and made me take the post down, which by the way, went viral. Would have went super viral if I didn't um, take it down. But the reason they did that is because they are so scared of getting nailed by the government and or being sued by a patient for releasing private information, okay? So instead of the hospitals going like, okay, we have rules and we have these specific rules, they have rules that are like, here's the level of where the HIPAA is, the hospital rules like off the charts. They, they're like, never take any pictures ever in the hospital. I'm like, do you know what that does to learning and teaching? So now as a surgeon, I can't, I can only f***ing talk one-on-one -on -one with a student or a resident. I can't teach anybody sh right, in the hospital. I have to go home, I take make these videos in my house because I can't do anything in the hospital. I have to make them in my car on the way to work because I can't go in the hospital and do these videos because not only now will I possibly be in trouble, every single person in the hospital thinks it's illegal what I'm doing, okay? Even if it's not, like if I'm in a, a room by myself with nobody there and I'm taking a photo or a video, everybody, all the employees think that that's illegal and I'm doing something wrong and they'll f***ing report me, right? Because they don't know either because every they've everyone's gotten so scared of it 
Like nobody knows the rules. It's it's stupid. And I've taken classes like the American College of Surgeons has classes on social media and you know all this these the HIPAA rules and stuff like that. I am very aware of what I can and cannot do. All these amazing surgeons and doctors we have, but they are not online because they're so petrified of f***ing HIPAA. And I don't I don't know what to do. Like I can't I can't do it by myself, you know, there's no way I'm going to change the rules by myself, but maybe if you guys go and talk with your surgeons, or if you are surgeons out there watching this, go and talk with your administration, and if we put enough pressure on all this bullshit, then maybe we can get something changed. I don't know, I mean, I, you know, I understand that there's concern for patients and that we should not overlook that. That is an is important thing. Patients should have privacy with their health information, but it has gone way beyond that. It has gone way beyond that. We, we are so stifled as, as, a, as an industry. All these amazing surgeons, they're petrified. They don't want to do anything. No pictures, no fucking video, oh god, video, Jesus Christ, pictures is one thing, if I try and take video in the hospital, there's no way, they'll lose their minds, and this is not just one hospital, okay, this, I'm talking about all hospitals, and the story I wanted to tell is that all these different hospitals I go to are reinventing the wheel, okay, it's ridiculous, like, every time I go to a different place that is, they're all making new rules and stuff, and like, so... For one example, a simple, simple example is there's a timeout. We call it a timeout before each operation. And what you do is you say, uh, okay, let's do our timeout now when you're about to start surgery. And you say, I'm Dr. Parker. This is patient John Smith. He's getting a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. He has his VTE prophylaxis in place and he got antibiotics, does everybody agree, or the and or, then you go and talk to everybody around the room and say, my name is so-and-so, I'm the person, you know, I'm the anesthesiologist, uh, and I'm the scrub tech, and I'm the tech, and whoever, and so inter everyone introduces themselves. Okay, that's that, that, that became popular after a couple amputations were done on the wrong side. It, it sounds really bad, but it was like, a guy got amputated. Both legs were so bad, they looked like they needed to be amputated. They went and amputated the wrong one. Well, he eventually got the other one amputated as well. So anyway, we do this timeout thingy at the beginning of all operations, which is fine. That's great. You want to do that. It's a national thing to do timeouts. Everyone's required to do it. And this hospital does it different than this hospital does it different than this hospital does it different than this hospital. You know why? Because there's no f***ing communication. It's the internet, 2017. There's mass communication, the information highway. The f***ing information is not being connected to all these healthcare workers. And so everybody's in a silo and everybody, when they get the paper, oh, well, this is a thing we have to do now from the administration. Well, I guess, I guess we're the only ones. I don't know. I have no idea because I've never been on the f***ing internet because I can't. God damn. Like, really? The surgery education is in this crisis, right? And surgeons, they're all like, all the old guys are like, you young kids, you don't know shit anymore. You can't operate when you finish because of the 80 hour work week. And how are we going to teach surgeons? You got to be there 100 and 120 hours a week or you're never going to learn anything. The answer is right in front of you it's technology it's video video is the answer when the residents can't be in the operating room they can't do a hundred laparotomies during their residency if they can watch a hundred laparotomies on video and then do 40 that makes up the difference That's the answer. I got like 12 more examples. Uh, 12, I got a, a thousand more examples. Please help me, please God, please Jesus, baby Jesus, help me. Help me, help me help you. The other example is when I was a resident, I was reading everything, right? Books, holy shit. Like it's almost crazy to think about right now, but I was reading everything and, and this fellow, super cool guy comes up, he goes, Hey, I got something for you. I think it'll really help your surgical technique. He's like, you know, you're doing really well, but I'm gonna show you how to supercharge your learning. I was like, yeah, okay. He's like, all right, I'll bring it tomorrow. I was like, okay. 
So he brings me this plastic grocery bag full of DVDs this big, okay? And I go, I look in there and it's surgical procedures on video. And he goes, this is learning on steroids, okay? Learning on steroids. So I go home and I watch all those videos. And a lot of the, op well, some of the operations were ones I've done before because I was like a third, I can't remember, a third or fourth year resident. And some of them I hadn't done yet. So the ones that I did do, I saw different techniques because, I mean, the way you learn to operate is from watching another surgeon. You don't read it in a f***ing text, like that doesn't do it. You have to go and watch somebody else do it, and then you do their technique, and then in residency, you you watch 10 surgeons do one operation, they do it all differently, or little pieces differently here and there, and you pick up things, you're like, oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that, oh, I like that technique. Oh, shit, look at that. And now, even when I operate with surgeons now, you know, I'm like, oh, look at that technique, that's different than I've seen before. I like that, but I don't like how he did that so much, but I like this, right? Imagine if there's a thousand of them, everybody does, everybody puts their operations online. Now you have, you're you supercharging your learning. So anyway, he, he gave me that stuff. And then when I went to operate, it wasn't just reading in a book, like trying to make it up in my head. I was like, okay, I know exactly what to do now. I know exactly how to do this Nissen. I've never done a Nissen, but I, know, I already know how to do it, right? And after a while, surgery is not about learning technique, it's recognizing stuff. And you can't recognize it in a book, like you have to see it in surgery. And so then after I did this, the, I'll watch these videos, I'd go in and do a Nissen, like for my first time, and the surgeon's like, I, he doesn't have to tell me to do anything, hardly, right? Compared to where, when I didn't see that operation before and I was reading it, and I'm trying to think like, what's next? I don't, uh, I'm not, I can't remember the steps. Let's see, number one, it was like, you know, open campers fashion, like whatever the f you know? So, I, I, I just, I'm just like stunned right now. I'm, it, it's been building up for a while. And especially since I started doing a lot of social media and, and YouTube, it's really brought it to light for me. There's just like how stifled we are and how much, how much smarter we could all be and how much better we could be. So my point in bringing all around is, is patient safety is suffering, okay? What if your surgeon is a hundred times smarter, right? What if he's a hundred times dumber because he doesn't watch video or he can't have access to a thousand different surgeons doing operations? What if he's a hundred times dumber? Do you want that guy? Patient safety, worst thing ever to happen to patient safety, HIPAA. Hey, subscribe, like, and comment. Oh, definitely comment. I know you guys are gonna comment on this. Comment on this one, I wanna hear what your thoughts are. And if you have any ideas how to fix it, that would be great too. So hey, thank you guys very much for watching these videos. Take care.